Moving out of care and into independent living is a big move. You should know what your rights are, what to expect and what you're entitled to. The average age of young people leaving care in Scotland is under 17, compared to 25 for those living at home. All the young people in this film are at various stages of leaving care or are now living independently. By sharing their own experiences with you, we hope you realise that there are many different routes to independent living, but with the right support and guidance, it should be a positive experience. Do you like them? I do. It's nice here. Why is it nice? It's like staff are nice and they've like made it nice, so it's like not just like a children's home, like it's my house and it's like homely and that's why I like it. How does the thought of leaving here and moving in on your own, how does that make you feel? That's quite like, that'd just be weird, like moving out here and actually like living on my own. That's like scary to think that. But it'll be good also like to have like my own, my own place, my own space, to do like my own thing, because like sometimes it's annoying here with like younger kids. When do you think you're going to move on and sort of move into your own place? Well, it depends how long it takes. Hopefully, the end of this year or the start of next year. You move into your own place. Well, hopefully, that's what I'm planning to do. And how old will you be when you move? Seventeen or eighteen. How does the, the thought of living by yourself, how does that make you feel? Well, I'm excited but I'm scared to be alone all the time and like not having like people around me and people I care about all the time. And well right now I'm, I'm still staying in care home but I'm um, just waiting in a flat. I'm waiting in one like pot of up or whatever or waiting in them finding one for me. Like I'm excited. But sad at the same time because I've stayed in the kid home for seven years, so it's like my, my own house. Um, don't really want to leave, but I'm mean, excited at the same time because I've grown out of it and I just want to have my own place and do my own things and stuff like that. Soon I will have to be looking about like through care after care and moving out here. I don't really not something like I think about or like want to think about leaving here. I can actually like not imagine the day I leave here. In pieces. <laughs> Every young person leaving care should complete Pathways. Pathways is the process of assessing, planning and reviewing a young person's through care and after care support needs. The views of a young person must be taken into account when you're leaving care and when your Pathways assessment and plans are being made. What is a Pathway plan? Well, I'm just starting to do it. So in the next couple of weeks I'll do my pathway planning and I'll be doing independent living and stuff, so. There's seven areas in the pathway plan and we look at house and what your needs are, what your responsibilities are about education or careers, uh, where you would like to live, family, work, money. So there's a whole host of kind of different sections to it that you answer which gives the people within the through care after care team a better idea about where you are and what support you might need when you move on to independent living. Pathways isn't always the uh, that all isn't always done the right way. I mean, there's a lot of people that have started their pathways but haven't finished it. That have already moved out and got their own accommodation, and the pathway is, the pathways is just left and. It's it's a bit outward because pathways need to be done before you leave care. It's not a, it's not the case about leaving care and they're not done. They need to be done, and because it, it's it's basically it's a legal document, a legal document that you need to do before you leave care. I've done my pathways, but I've not finished them, and it's just like booklets where like you talk about your life and like what's happening and stuff like that and what you want to do with your life and. Just general stuff. You talk about moving on and stuff like that, and budgeting, and just like everyday day to day skills, like independent stuff, like doing your own washing, cooking, and stuff like that. So right now you're in the transition of moving. Yeah, I'm in the transition just now. When I started doing the process about two years ago, 
I done I done some pathway planning with uh, some of the workers, and done some cooking, uh, and some budgeting. I've been staying at my nan's for about two months now. I'm finding it a lot harder than what I thought it was going to be. I had somebody to wake me up in the mornings. I had my meals keep all my meals cooked for me, and it, from going to that to making my own meals and waking myself for God stuff, it's quite a reality shock. The National Care Standards, care homes for children and young people, are there to protect you and to help you understand what level of care you're entitled to. Standard 17, Moving On, is about moving on from care. It tells you how you'll get encouragement, help and guidance from staff about living more independently. I don't know. I think as long as young people are aware of their rights, um, that they're aware of that they're entitled to a service, um, and that they're being supported and that they're entitled to support, and that if things aren't going the way they should, then they're also entitled to complain, and that there's a process for that. I think for that, a young pe that's enough for a young person to be dealing with, along with everything else that's going on in their life. The national care standards are obviously there. It's a way to make sure that young people are getting what service that they require. And it's about um, kind of benchmarking what you offer young people, making sure that each young person is treated the same and it's to a standard that's acceptable um, within the Scottish kind of executive outline the national care standards, but it's not something that young people are really familiar with when they come into care. They have much more kind of pressing things on their minds about kind of their life and, you know, their experiences that they've had. Under the Children's Scotland Act 1995, your local authority has a legal responsibility to do the following. If you come off your supervision requirement after your official school leaving date, every local authority has to provide aftercare support up to your 19th birthday. Your local authority can also continue to provide support up to your 21st birthday and can continue into your 20s if you're continuing education or training. Uh, I was in care for since seven year old. Um, been through a few foster families, didn't work out. Um, after that, pretty much moved into children's homes and got a lot of support and help from there. Um, even had a wee spell in secure unit as we'll say, secure care. So you were, so you were 16 when you left? Care all together. System. Yeah, yeah, I left care when I turned 16. I got myself independent, uh, got myself a job with help with the social work, funnily enough. Um, after that, uh, pretty much just on and off the work market, as I say. How old were you when you moved um, into your old place? Um, I was 17. Yeah, I was 17. I'm now a single mum. Staying in the house on my own with just me and my daughter. How did that make you feel when you were Scared. Why was it scared? Because I knew there wasn't going to be anybody there. I was going to be on my own. And obviously I was pregnant when I moved out, so... Which made me even more scared. What age do you actually have to leave the system? It, I suppose it depends on the person if they're ready or not. But personally, my opinion, it should be up to 21 because there's not, there's, I mean, there's a lot of, there's a lot of young people out there as well that are still, that are in a, a family environment that are leaving home at, say, 25 or 30. So we should maybe up it to the, to the 20 stages. So we're not always rushing young people to move out because there's always, the, there's always a barrier when you move out and you find it hard to get past that barrier. So maybe we should do a bit more work on up the age to actually leave care. Kids nowadays aren't moving out to like at least 24. Because there's no way there, there's, it's so hard to get jobs and stuff like that these days and to get money you need to have money to have your own flat and stuff like that. And 18, 16 is a really young age, it's not a good age to move out. It's too young. 18 as well is too young, I think. I think 20, 20 and above is a good, good age. If you're 100% sure that you are ready to move on, make sure you have proper support and guidance. 
your through care worker or local authority can tell you what sport you can get now and in the future. What um, advice um, and help are you giving to, to leave and get set up on your own? Um, I get a lot of support, I get help with like, organising things, like moving my stuff, like getting my electricity and all that switched on, help with money and stuff, like how to get money. I think I got the right amount of help and the right support for people. Some people, I think some people have a problem with asking for help. I know how hard it is sometimes just to ask for help. Just to go like, oh, I'm struggling with this. Could you help me? Sometimes it's just a bit, it's, it's hard. Yeah, I still get uh, support for you, for you care. Um, I need the support. I wouldn't just like to get abandoned. Uh, you know, you get your own tendency, they kind of leave you to be on your own, but I've asked through care for still to be there for support, um, for help with, if I've got problems with bills or something, I can just go on the phone to through care and they're there to support me. So, I'd rather have it that way and being left alone, because I think that's a lot more stress put on me. Um, my social worker isn't, isn't really interested when I turned 19, she basically said the only contact I'll be having with you is uh, phone contact. And uh, I haven't really spoke to her since then. I've spoke to other members of social work, but that's about that. Maybe, like, maybe there's other young people out there that need more help than I do. But even at that, I still need the support. And just to have phone contact with a social worker isn't isn't really substantial. It's I need a lot more than that, and what somebody to talk to. I mean, I can't always I can't always talk to friends and family. Maybe I'm just being selfish, but I, I I do think that I should have more, a bit more contact than just phone calls. What support um, do you get at the minute? My through care aftercare worker and my social worker. What do you through care, aftercare and uh, social worker, what do they do for you? They check if, um, how things are going, if I need anything, and if I, if I do need anything, they'll do what they can to help me or support me if they need. Do you get enough support or do you need more? Yeah, I get enough support. Uh, I know they're only a phone call away and they tell me any time if I need to speak to them, even if it's just a chat, I can give them a call. What, what help were you given or support when you moved into your own flat, in your own house? Um, I was given a lot of support actually. A member of staff used to come and see me, make sure I was getting on okay. They helped me to get stuff for my house and they were just there. And I knew if I needed them or I couldn't sleep, I knew I could pick up the phone and phone them and they wouldn't mind. If you could change one aspect of your experience and go to the system, what would that one thing be? More, um, because when I was living in sport accommodation, there was a lot of, there was supposed to be like a weekly checkups. You're supposed to have like a sport worker or something. And mine fell sick, apparently. And she wasn't there and nobody told me what was happening. So I wasn't getting any support 